Hallelujah. You know, Donald, Donald Trump, during the time of their election, he said to all his opponents, low energy, low energy, low energy. And he was going on a higher energy, higher energy. I want a higher energy. Your energy is too low. Lifted up, say, Heavenly Father, in person, online, we have come from different works of life to draw, to draw from you, to receive of you fresh word, insight, revelation, to increase our level of light and to discover new keys to unlock all the possibilities of tomorrow. Therefore, Heavenly Father, let spells be broken. Let blessing blockers be arrested. In the name of Jesus, right now, let every spirit of defiance in the atmosphere break in the name of Jesus. Right now, as we put our hands together, let the word of the Lord have a free course. How in the second there is unknown. Amen. Today is the first day of the month. Eh? First Sunday of the month of July, which is the second half of the year. In the book of Revelation, the Bible said that there are 12 trees that bear fruit every month in heaven. And today, I declare that the month of July shall be our month of victory. Your energy is very low. And whatsoever you say, if you believe in your heart, it shall come to pass. So I said the month of July is the month of our victory. Now, I want to talk to you about the master key of the kingdom. The master key. Tell somebody, the master key. Uh, there are keys, but there is a master key that unlocks a lot of doors in this kingdom. In this kingdom, keys are very critical. Nothing works in this kingdom without this master key. You can have other keys, but this master key overrides other keys. And you need this master key to function in this kingdom that you and I belong to. Anything you do outside this master key, it does not work. So give me 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. Yeah, thank you. You may be seated with a shout and a clap of it. Amen. Whatsoever is born of God. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So what is the victory that overcomes the world? 
Our faith. Come on, talk to me. Give me some high energy. What is the victory that overcomes the world? So that is the victory. Faith overcomes this world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And without faith, nothing works in this kingdom. Give me Romans 14, 23. Give me Romans 14, 23. Nothing works in this kingdom without faith. Go ahead. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because uh -huh. he eateth not of faith. Uh -huh. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatsoever is done in this kingdom without this master key called faith is sin. See, I hear you. Then if you come to the book of Hebrews 6, uh, Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's just impossible to please him. How many of you want to please God? You want to please God? Come on, talk to me. You want to please God? Then understand that without faith, not without wisdom, not without knowledge, not without understanding, all those things are critical. But the master key here is, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if you want to be a God pleaser, you must access faith. You must know how to access this master key called faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Few things you must know about faith. Number one, faith is not a feeling. Write it down. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not an emotion. Faith is not an opinion or a thought or even a decision. Faith is a spirit. Second Corinthians 4.13 Faith is a spirit. Faith we, is a spirit. We having the same spirit of faith. We having the same thought. No. The same feeling of faith. No. But the what? Spirit of faith. The same? Spirit of faith. So you say faith. Faith. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. That's it. And uh, if you go ahead reading. According as it is written. Uh -huh. I believed and therefore have I spoken. Yes sir. We also believe and therefore speak. So faith is activated or faith is released or faith works through your mouth. Say faith is released. It works. It's activated through your mouth. So use your mouth. Tell somebody, use your mouth to activate your faith. Faith that does not speak is not faith. Faith speaks. Tell somebody, faith speaks. Tell somebody, faith is not silence. The Bible says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you can believe, and until you speak what you believe, you don't have it, and it's not faith. Faith that does not speak is not faith. So if you have faith, the way you activate and release your faith, and the way you work your faith is through your mouth. Say, I hear you. Now come to Romans 12 and 3, because there's a lot of you who say, well, well, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. I don't have faith like others. I don't have faith like Papa. Now I'm going to show you why you think you don't have faith. And I'll show you why a lot of you, your faith is still at the level where it has been since you got born again. Go ahead and look at it. Romans 12. And three. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has given has dealt to every man. That God has what? Dealt to dealt every, with every one of us. The measure of the faith. measure of what? Faith. So tell somebody you have a measure of faith. Tell somebody you have faith, but it's a measure. Now, whether you are going to grow higher than the level of your faith, whether your faith is going to be stronger than it is right now at where you are, it has to be tested. It has to be tested. Everything 
that God created is tested. Somebody said to me, say, Papa, what happens when you are not hearing God? And when God is silent and he's not speaking, I said, whenever you don't hear him, whenever he's silent, and whenever you are dealing with things that you can't make sense of, things that don't add up in your life, whether it's about your husband, your wife, your marriage, your children, your grandchildren, your loved one, you are going through things and you are dealing with issues. You can't make sense of it. It does not add up. Uh -huh. There is a strong possibility, ladies and gentlemen, that your faith is being tested or tried. Realize that whenever you are in the exam room, going through exam, your teacher is silent. Teacher don't speak during exams. Come on, give me some high energy. Now, you know why teacher doesn't say anything? Because teacher has taught you and given you information ah, for the exams day. So at the time of exam, it's the time to put to use and put to practice all the information you have received to see whether you really help and whether you really learn whether you are very observant and whether you are up to the task. It's a time for promotion. So testing time is not the time of depression. It's not a time of frustration. It's not a time for being anxious, panicking, crying, fearing, doubting God. That is not the time for that. Any time you are being tested, you are being prepared for another level to go to another class. Say, God is getting you ready for another class. Getting you ready for another dimension. Say, I hear you. You see, the issue with Abraham, the fathers of faith, and if you look at somebody like Noah, when Noah was building the ark, the issue was not the ark he was building, but it was whether the ark he was building will pass the test that when the flood came, would the ark leak and sink or the ark will float on top of the water? That was the issue. If you look at the two men who built, one on the sand and one on a rock, it wasn't about the buildings because they were all standing as buildings. What made the difference between one and the other was the fact that when the test came or the storm hit and the flood came and the rain descended, one stood the test and another failed. So one remained where they were and another went up. In order for you to go up, your faith must be tested. And during the time of exam, it's not a time of condemnation. God is not killing you. God is not destroying you. You are just being given an opportunity to put your faith to work, to release your faith, and to see whether your faith will stand the test of time or not. All of us, including me. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I said, if you have children and you have grandchildren, be careful what you say, how you respond to other people's children when you hear things about the children of others, be very careful. Because you don't know what is happening to them. It could be the test of their faith and work with God. I was in London with Dr. Maurice Sorello, mission to London, when there was a great move of God and over 20,000 people had gathered. And there was a great move and miracles when a call came to Dr. Maurice Sorello that his son had died with overdose of drugs. And he had to leave the meeting, go bury the son, and come back and continue the meeting. My grandfather in the faith, T.L. Osborne, his only son died of overdose whilst he was saving nations, filling stadiums, raising the dead with great miracles. And he buried him and continued preaching. Ora Roberts lost mother and son. Let me tell you something. Will you continue to preach this gospel? 
or you quit or you give up. It's a test whether God can trust you because whenever we are tested, it's not just about the test. It's also about trust. God is trusting you to see whether he can trust you at the level where you are, whether at a lower level or a higher level, whether you have much or little, God is testing and trusting you to see whether you qualify for more or not. Hear me. If you cannot be accountable, if you are not accountable, or you cannot be held accountable, you are not qualified for more, no matter the level where you are in life. If you are too big to serve, you are too big to lead. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, the guys who received the talents, to one he gave five, to another he gave two, and to the other he gave one. And the master left. If you have to be supervised to work, then you are not qualified for the job. If I have to supervise you to carry out an assignment or a duty entrusted to you before you perform, you are not qualified. True faithfulness is not when your boss is around, but it's when your boss is not around and you still deliver like your boss is there, then you can be counted upon. Somebody say, I hear you. The master gave them the talent and he left, went and came back. And when he came back, he requested accountability from the one that had five, from the one that had two, including the one that has one. So it doesn't matter the level where you are, you, your faith will be tested and God is trusting you to see when you have little, are you still dependable? Can you be accountable? Can God trust you to still be obedient, to still tight, to still serve him, to still do God right and still love God because all things work together eh? for good to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. You must understand one thing, that it doesn't matter the level you are, high or low, God still expects you to love him. And God still expects you to function as you ought to function, irrespective of your level. The one that had one talent was called to accountability. He was called to accountability. It's very important for you to realize that at every level where you are, God will test your faith and God is watching you and God is trusting you to see if he can depend on you and whether you pass the test for another level or you remain where you are. Come with me to Genesis 22. Look at verse 1 and 2 and then we'll come to verse 13. Then we'll come to verse 16 and 17. Genesis 22. The and new it came James. to pass after these things that God now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. He tested him. He didn't tempt him. He tested. And what did he test? He tested his faith. Go ahead. And said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell Please you. Please understand. Understand here that God means what he says. He says what he means. And God is very specific. God is in, God does not miss it. He was very specific. God knows the extent to which you are blessed. He knows exactly the numbers of the hair on your head. So you can't mess with God. You can't fool him. He knows everything about you. He knows your end from the beginning. And God said, Abraham, I want to really see where your faith is. I want to see if I can give you more. Abraham, it's time to be promoted. But before this promotion, your faith must be tested. And I want to see all that you have learned of me all these years. Whether you have come to the place where you trust me and where your faith is in me. 
or is in what I have given you. I want to find out, Abraham, if your faith is in the provision or in the provider, if your faith is in the blessing or in the blesser, if your faith is in the creation or the creator, let me see where your faith lies. For a man's life does not consist by the abundance of things that he possesses. So it doesn't matter what you possess and what you have. Your life does not depend on that. Somebody say, I hear you. I was telling them in the first service that if you go to have a procedure, uh, you go to do surgery, you walk in there, they strip you naked. You have to remove your ring. It doesn't matter how expensive you are. They are not taking you in with your ring. Your watch, everything, put it aside. Your money don't come there. Your cars don't come there. Who you are and your influence means nothing. They strip you of everything and say, put it in that uh, well, drawer there. And then they give you some gown. They give you some gown. Just cover yourself. Then some small lady will come and say, follow me. And then the lady will say, lie on this bed. What is your name? Tell me your date of birth. By the time you finish, you are up. And she will say, welcome back. Go to the drawer. Your, your underwear is there. I saw it. Your watch is there. And you pick everything up. You are nothing. You are nobody. So please, take it easy. I know you are loaded. I know you are connected. I know you are powerful. I know you have masters and degree and PhD and you've been to the best of schools and everything. But you know something? Take it easy. Because all that is sinking sand. Come on, somebody, talk to me. Give me some high energy. I said all that is sinking sand. So God said, Abraham, I have something bigger than Isaac. I have something better than Isaac for you. I want you to go to the next level. I want you to experience something I call transgenerational blessings. I want to give you additional blessing, and then I want to even move you from additional blessing to the blessing of multiplication. But before I get you there, you have to go through an exam. And you must pass this test. And during the time of this test or exam, I'm going to be silent. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to watch you and I'm trusting you, Abraham. I'm trusting you. Turn to somebody and say, can God trust you? Just ask them, can God trust you? Can he trust you? You know, a bishop friend of mine was talking to me yesterday. And he said a gentleman in his church came to him one day and said, Bishop, pray for me. And he said, for what? He said, I need a job. So he prayed. They got, the guy got a job. Then he came with his tithe. Then another time he came and said, Bishop, pray for me for more increase. He prayed. The guy got an increase. And he was paying his tithe and giving an offering and helping the church. Then another time the guy came and said, Bishop, I want you to pray for me. And he said, why? He said, pray for me because I'm really struggling with the tithe I have to give to God now. The money is too much and I'm struggling with it. So Bishop said, okay, fine, let me pray for you. So the bishop said, Father, take him back to the level where he was comfortable of paying tithe. And he said, no, 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 no. no. Don't take me back. I will pay the tithe. Are you hearing me, somebody? His faith was tested at that level and he was struggling. Because now, when he looked at the tithe, it was too much, and he was struggling with this. I'm told that J.C. Penny was a very good tighter, and he was tightening for years. Then he got to a time the tight became so large, huge, big, mega, and he decided that, no, I can't give all of this to God and the church. So he started reducing the tight. As he started reducing the tight, the business and everything and his finances started going down. So one day he said to the Lord, why is this happening? And he said, but you are reducing it. You are reducing your titan. And you've given the adversary and the devourer the chance to devour. I can't help you. That is not the way the rules work. You go against the rules, you pay the consequence. So he went back 
to paying the full tithe. And his business started rising, rising, and he did well till he passed on, and the business is still working. The reason why in this part of the world, Africa and Ghana, you don't see next, second, third, fourth generation wealth, like the Rockefellers, like Walmart, like Coca Oat, like Colgate, and many others, is because most of the fathers in Africa, they, they are not titans. They don't honor God with their wealth. They don't acknowledge God as the source of their wealth. They see what they have as their own. They manage it as their own. So when they pass on, everything ends with them. It must not be so. It must not be so in the kingdom. In the kingdom, everything works by one master key. And that master key unlocks every other provision, whether it's peace or joy, justification, holiness, purity, long life, protection, peace, joy, deliverance, name it, they all work through one master key called faith. For without faith, none of us can please God. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the church and how long you know God. If you don't have faith, you have an issue with God and God has an issue with you. You cannot please him. Somebody say, I hear you. Let me show you some scriptures. The way you are looking at me, I, I, need, to, I need to hit you with some scriptures. Amen. Somebody say, I hear you. All right, come with me to the book of, okay, we've looked at Hebrews, we've looked at Romans. I want us to come to, come to the book of Romans chapter 5, from verse 1 to 4. And then I'll bring you to some other scriptures. Go ahead. Therefore, being justified by faith. We, we are justified by faith. How do you obtain justification? By faith. By faith. You are not justified without faith. Your justification is not by wisdom, nor knowledge, nor understanding, nor even by holiness and purity. It's by what? Faith. And without that, and faith is not feelings, it's not the way you feel or what you think. Faith is a spirit. And faith is the product of the word of God spoken by the Holy Spirit. Faith comes through the inspired word of God. So without, I was telling my daughter the other day, girl, let me tell you something. I said, you see this father of yours. Everything I am and I will ever be is faith. Is faith. And I said, the day God says, the Bible doesn't work anymore. The day heaven declares that Psalm 119 verse 89 does not work anymore, that is when I'm finished. But as long as the word of God abided forever and faith is a product of the word, I said, that is the greatest gift I can give to you and my grandchildren. The faith in my heart, I said, let this faith in my heart also be in you. Because this faith in my heart can stand anything, can deal with anything, can withstand anything, can survive anything. Are you hearing me? Say yes. yes. Give me some high energy. Say yes. yes. Come on, say yes. yes. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus so Christ. So faith brings justification and guarantees peace. You can't obtain peace, nor justification without faith. Go ahead. By whom also we have access so by faith. So faith also gives you what? Access. It gives you what? Access. So without faith, you don't have access. You can't access anything in this kingdom outside of faith. Go ahead. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein uh -huh. we stand. We stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Uh -huh. And not only the only soul, but we glory in tribulations You also. know what the tribulation here stands for? It's, it's when you are being tested. Yeah. Going through the exams. And my test is not your test. Neither is your test mine. We are all tested in different areas of our work with God. Different areas of our lives can be tested in the area of your marriage, your wife, your children, your husband, your health, and your finances. In everything, you can be tested. And God tested Abraham and said, Abraham, 
what I have for you is bigger and better than what you have. You waited 25 years. I tested and trusted you and you passed it and I gave you Isaac. Now I have something bigger and better than Isaac. If you give me Isaac, I will give you Jesus. If you give me Isaac, I will give you that which you've never had before. But in order for you to have that which you've never had before, I have to test you. I have to see whether you are willing to let go what you are excited about and what you are used to. Are you willing to lose what you get? Are you willing to let me test you? And can I trust you with something more and better than you've ever had? And before you can have what you've never had before, I got to teach you how to let go of what you have and how to move your faith and trust out of what you've never had before into what I have in stock for you. So look at Genesis. No, finish, finish, finish this and let's go to Genesis. Yes. Glory and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You see, he said, knowing, we know that when it's time for exams, it's a time to rejoice. It's an opportunity. Exam time doesn't destroy you. So when you are going through trials, tribulation, troubles, you're going through difficult times, that is not the time to quit. That is not the time to be depressed. That is not the time to be emotional. You see, we are not growing, we are not maturing in God because we are always depending on what is on the outside instead of what is in the inside. I was telling some pastors yesterday, I said, a gift can open a door for you, but it takes more than a gift to stay in there. And I said, I said, a son or a daughter can have success or greatness, but it takes a father to teach you how to maintain it and how to handle it and how to manage it. So it's not about the gift because you can be so gifted and can be so blessed that the gift and the blessing can destroy you. It can it can destroy you. And let me explain it to you. Peter taught all night and had nothing. He gave his vote to Jesus. Jesus used his boat to preach the gospel. And he said, give and it shall be given. You have given and to every labor there is a reward. So Peter, you've labored. Now is the time of reward. He said, cast your net to the deep. Peter looked at him and said, Master, let me be honest with you. I've been in this fishing business for years. I'm skillful in this business. I'm a master in this field. I know what I'm doing. And Jesus said, hey, stop the nonsense. You're dealing with a master. I created all things. I know where the fishes are. So cast your net to the deep on this side. He did. And the Bible said, immediately they did. They had such a harvest that Peter's net and the boat could not handle it. The boat immediately was torn, the, the, the net, and the boat began to sink. The weight of the blessing, he hadn't developed the muscles and the capacity and the capability to handle it. Are you hearing me? And I told somebody the other day, a very young lady doing very well, and we were talking, and I looked at her and I laughed. And she said, Papa, why are you laughing? And I said, I'm laughing because you haven't earned what you have. He said, what do you mean? I said, you have received elevation and you have received pro prominence and you come into success without process and it will destroy you. Whenever you come into prominence and into influence, into elevation and relevance without process, you don't have the capability, the stamina, and the shock absorbers to handle it. Listen, blessing comes with weight. And it can sink you. And Peter had what he wanted that he told for all night that he had never had before. And yet when it came, his net and his boat couldn't handle it. 
He had to call for others to come and help. And even when the others joined him, all of their boat began to sink. So be careful what you call blessing. Don't be too excited about being blessed. Don't be too excited about becoming big and trending and becoming huge. Be more excited about process and about developing character. Are you hearing me, somebody? Because you see, character will give you longevity. Gifts doesn't give longevity. And anointing and gifting, that is one mistake I made over the years. I was into giftings and anointing until I realized that gifts and anointing upon, that when the gift and the anointing that is upon you is bigger than the character and the anointing within you, you are in trouble. Because the gift and the anointing upon is for ministry. But the gift and the anointing within develops character for longevity. And if you don't have character, you won't last. So, I have come to a place, numbers, money, material gains don't impress me anymore. What impresses me is character. I watch for character. And character guarantees longevity. I was talking to Bishop Dr. Howard Mills the other day, a few days ago, and I said, Bishop, when I met you at Achimota, and Bishop Obodai was there at that same year, I said, how old was you? He said, 19. And we started laughing. And he said, do you realize that you and I have been talking for over 40 years? We've married, have kids, grandchildren, and we are still talking after 40 years. We are still talking. And it's not that our relations have not been tested. It's been tested. And it will be tested to go to another level. But after 40 years, we are still talking. Tell somebody, if Jesus tarries. You and I will still be talking after 40 years. Put your hands together and give God praise. Rejoicing in tribulation. Why? Because tribulation workers patience. And patience experience. And, and patience experience. And experience hope. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. And by hope, you despise shame. Yeah. Because the love when of you have, when you have an expectation of what the future has for you, which is Jeremiah 9, 29, 11, that God has planned good for you and not evil, and has planned an expected end for you, that it doesn't matter what the enemy does, you will end well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, I will end well. I will end well. That is hope. When you have this hope by experience in you, it doesn't matter what's going on and it doesn't matter how bad it looks. You despise the shame. There are things I am not ashamed about because I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that God is able to turn it around as long as my faith doesn't go under. And I believe God, I will not fail the test. Whatever test is it that I have to go through to get to another level, I will not fail it. Say yes. Look at Genesis 22, 13. Look at Genesis 22, 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, uh -huh. and behold, behind yes, him a ram caught in the ticket uh -huh. by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. You see, God was not interested in Isaac. God said, Abraham, the way the rules of engagement works, I want to take you to another level. I want you to have additional blessing. And from addition, I want to move you to multiplication. And I want to give you transgenerational blessing. But before I do that, you have to go to the exam room. You got to go to the exam room. You have to pass the test. Your faith must pass this test. And God said, I don't really need your son. I made provision for the sacrifice. But I want to see whether I can trust you. Or whether you are one who because you've never had a son before. And you waited 25 years. Now that you have a son, you think you have arrived. 
And that is all that life is for you. And there are so many of you like that. When you come into money, influence, success, breakthrough, some opportunity, access that you've never had before, it gets into your head and your whole lifestyle changes. If you have one billion today and you are still the same, acting the same, serving the Lord, still doing things in the church like always, then you can be trusted. But if money and influence and position and elevation changes you, you didn't earn it. You are not qualified for it. You are an amateur. You are an amateur and a kid and a child and a baby. And that thing will destroy you. And that's why there are so many who become big and huge in the ministry for a season. And it's a matter of time. And I've seen many rise and before. I've seen so many. Bishop Nyaku will tell you. Bishop James will tell you. I've seen so many. And I hear so many things I don't talk about. And it's because people have risen. And for whatever reason, they want to be big. They want to have the numbers. They want to be huge. They want to beat everybody. They want to overtake everybody. And I stand by and I look at them. And I say, go ahead. Because some of the things people live in contend with me over, I'm not interested in. I don't want it anymore. There are some opportunities people want to fight. And I just, no, no, don't fight me. You can have it. Take it. Take it. Why take it? Because I've gone past it. I don't want it anymore. So you don't have to fight me. Don't fight me. I'll give it to you. Just ask. You can take it. I've passed those things. You, you see, you come to a place of maturity and, and some things don't matter anymore. Things that used to matter, you know, I, I heard that they, they put in some newspapers the, the number of rich uh, men of God in Africa and one preacher was so angry because his name was not there. And I said, somebody told me, I didn't see anything. And he said, Papa, you are not, and I said, no, I'm not saying anything. Because ministry is not about riches. It's not about success or numbers. It's about how you finish. It's about how you finish. Are you hearing me? And hear me. Until you finish this race, you are not yet successful. Jesus said, it is finished. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And then the Bible said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Until you hear that word, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you are not yet successful. So be careful. Don't follow people based on their gifts. Because Satan is also gifted. Everybody can be gifted. Satan also comes as an angel of light. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to people. There are very gifted people online. I'm also online, so listen to them. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but don't be foolish. Are you hearing me? Uh, you, can, you can go to town and have dinner. And uh, you can go to town and eat. But don't make a restaurant eh, your constant place of eating. Have food in the house too. And don't throw away the food in the house. Just because you went out and you ate something and it was nicer than the food at home. And mister, sometimes the food you eat outside may be better than that of your wife. Because the wives can't get it right all the time. And sometimes they have to also put more pepper in the food for you. Because sometimes you, you are crazy. <laughs> and they have to give you more pepper to wake you up. Sometimes they have to put more salt intentionally and sometimes they miss it. But it's, the, it's still the safest place for you to eat than going to eat at the restaurant. So, I, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat at the restaurant because I'll be a fool to say you shouldn't eat at the restaurant because I know you. Whether I say it or I don't say it, you still listen online and it's fine. I have no issue with that. But you can go eat everywhere but still come home and still eat home because the house, the food in the house it's better than what you eat online. Say, I hear you. Come on, somebody, say, I hear you. Give me some energy. Give me some energy. Amen. Bishop, where were we? So let's go to Genesis 26. Let's go to 16 uh -huh. now. 16. So go to 13. We finished 13. So go 16. to 16. Go to 16. And he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. So this is God, oh, before the test, 
And before he went into the exam room, all he had was Isaac. Now, after passing the test, look at God. Number one, he said, I swear. I swear by myself. Here, here God said, Abraham, you haven't heard this before. Because you passed the test, I'm taking you to another level you haven't experienced before. I swear by myself. Hey! Somebody say, hey! Somebody say, hey! Somebody say, hey, 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 hey! Somebody say, look at God, look at God. God said, Abraham, because you passed the test, you are ready for another level. I swear by myself. Go ahead. For because of that thou hast done. He this, said. Because, because thou hast done this thing. Because you passed the test. And has not withheld your son. And because you didn't withhold what I have given you. But you were ready to let go for more. Hear me. You can't have more if you then let go what you have. Go ahead. That in blessing I will bless thee. So he said. You are blessed. But I'm giving you an additional blessing. He said, you are blessed, but I'm adding to what you have. Addition doesn't count until you pass the test. And until you pass the test, you still have what you have. And to have more than you have, you must pass the test. Number two, and in multiplying, I will multiply the seed. In multiplying. God said, Abraham. I'm moving you from the place of blessing to the place of multiplication. I'm taking you away from addition to multiplication. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And he said, your legacy you are worried about, I will take care of your legacy. And your legacy, your seed shall multiply like the stars of heaven and like the sun of the seashore. Go ahead. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And he said, your seed. I will give them dominion and audacity and supremacy to possess the gates of their enemies. That is a blessing you never had before. All you had was Isaac. Some of you, God is watching you. He's testing you. He's trusting you. And you are satisfied where you are. You think you've had it all. You've seen it all. And God is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. God said, if you know what I have in mind for you, you won't be excited about what you have and where you are, where you've been, and what you've touched. It's all babe talks. I'm telling you. I don't brag about a lot of things anymore because I passed there a long time ago. They mean nothing before God. God is not impressed about what we've done or where we are, but he's impressed of what can be done that is not yet done. Are you hearing me? Now the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered the hearts of men what God has in stock for those who love him no matter what. Can you love him even when he slays you? Job said, though he slays me, yet, 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 I will trust him. Because he demands it. He requires it from you and I. God said, Abraham, I have some additional blessings. But that is not all. I'm moving you from addition to multiplication. And to transgenerational blessings. Where your seed after you, I will multiply them, blow your mind. And even when you are long gone, your seed will still have supremacy and dominion over the gates of their enemies. That blessing, that breakthrough, never came, ladies and gentlemen, until he passed the test. And God has more in stock for you than you have right now. But to get to the next level and to have more than what you have right now, you must pass the test. Tell somebody, go through it. Somebody say, go through it. Say, stop having an attitude. Tell somebody, stop having that attitude. And stop telling me you are depressed, you are hurt, you are frustrated, you are offended. Those are baby talk, child language, pettiness. You are not growing. You still remain there. You want to get to the next level? Grow up. How do you grow? Pass the test. No pain, no gain. Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. I will continue 
We'll continue next week, but before then, I, I want to take you through some scriptures quickly. Amen. Come with me to Psalm 66 from verse 10 to 12. We are going to release our faith and activate our faith after this. Uh huh. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Has what? Proved us. Yeah. Uh huh. Thou hast tried us. That is test. Tried our faith. What do you do when God is pruning you? Sometimes when God is cutting back, he said, he said, he said, God will prune every tree so he can bear more fruit. If you're a fruit bearer, God will prune you to bear more fruit. You talk about being pruned? Hallelujah. Ask Bishop Nyako. Ask Bishop James. You see him sitting small like that. Eh? You talk about pruning? Uh-huh. He will tell you his experiences. Some of the things when he tells you, you ask for more grace. Are you hearing me? Go ahead. Uh -huh. Thou broughtest us into the net. Thou leadest us. No, go to us. verse 10. Read verse 10 quickly. For thou, O God, hast proved us. Thou uh -huh. hast tried us as silver is tried. You've tried us as silver is tried. Yeah. You have been tested. And when people are going through it, eh, be very careful. Sometimes we are in haste to talk about people's issues, especially about people's children and family issues. You hear things and you don't know what's going on. And then immediately you start talking. Be careful. Tell to somebody, be careful. God gave Job twice as much as he had. After he has been tested, say tested and tried. And I'll tell you something. I don't trust a lot of people. I'm telling you. I deal with so many people all over the nations. I don't trust a lot of people. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. He's a bishop. And we talked a lot every now and then. And I said, Bish. I said, Bish. I said, you're a good man. And I said, that's why I can't let you go. I can't let you go. Because you've been tested. You've been tried. And you are the kind of friends I want to hang with. I don't want to hang with this emotional, yo-yo, unstable, baby crying, complaining, critical, judging everybody, hurt and offended about everything. And I'm talking to you. Hear me. If you're a member of this church, you can be offended about so many things. Even I, I can offend you. My preaching, my style, the way I go about things can offend you and hurt you. And if anything hurts and offends you, it also stands to reason that you are not growing up, you are not maturing. You are still a child and a baby drinking milk. You are not on strong meat. But if I have offended you, please forgive me. I'm not intentional about it. I'm just being myself. And you may not like my style because I may not also like your style. But it is what it is. And, and please don't come to church because of me. Come because of Jesus. Because, hear me, Jesus, Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. Not me, I am not Jesus. Me, I can't die for you. No, 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 no. Ah, I, I'm thinking about myself, dying for you for what? Eh? Eh, and seriously speaking, listen, I won't share my blood for anybody. Uh -uh. I, I don't have that anointing. And I'm not the son of God. I'm not Jesus. Are you hearing me? Only Jesus can lay down his life and all that. I don't know if I can do that. Say yes. Bishop, I haven't got in there yet. Though. To lay down my life for you, for what? Share my blood for you, my blood. What will my blood do for you? If the blood of Jesus can save you, what will my blood do for you? Eh? The blood of Jesus is enough. You don't need any other blood. You don't need mine. And God doesn't need my blood to prove anything. The blood of Jesus is enough. Come on, put your hands together. Give him glory. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith, not me. So don't come to church for me. Those of you who come to church for me, you've missed it. You are still a baby. You are still on breast milk. Grow up. 
Come to church for Jesus. Come to church for the word. Come to church for salvation. Don't come to church because it's convenient. Come to church because God planted you here. And let me explain that to you. You didn't choose your earthly fathers or parents. You had no hand in who your father and your mother should be when you were born. And you don't choose who your spiritual father and mother is. God planted you here by design orchestration. Stay planted. Somebody's here, I hear you. Go ahead, Bishop. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. It means that you allowed affliction. Afflictions. All these things come to test our faith. The Bible says he himself took our infirmity by whose stripes we are healed. Then the Bible said in Psalm 103, in Psalm 103, check verse 3 and see. Check 3 or 4 and 5, let me see. Who, who forgives forgive all our Who forgives some? No. Who forgives some? No. But what? All. Do you realize that when God forgives, he forgives all? He doesn't do things half and half. He goes all the way. And God expects the same commitment from you and I. That if we are serving God, we must go all the way with him. Holding back nothing. Withholding nothing. Absolute surrender. Holding back nothing. Just like a woman who not share her husband with another woman. And no man wants to share his wife and his woman with another man. God doesn't want to share your commitment, love and loyalty with any but him. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you, sir. Go ahead. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Heals some. No. Heals some. Heals half. No. But heals what? All. So realize that when he forgives, he forgives you of what? All. When he heals, he heals us of what? All. Say forgiven. Say forgiven. Of all and healed of all. That is the word of God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say yes. Go back to 66. Go back to 66. Let's finish. You that. brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. Uh -huh. You have caused men to ride over our heads. He said, sometimes God will allow men to go over our heads. Yeah, sometimes God will allow. The Bible said the more they afflicted them, the more they multiply. See, I hear you. See, I hear you, somebody. Uh -huh. So sometimes God allows. The, like the other day, David said in Psalm 1 3, he said, Lord, why have they increased? Why have they increased that troubleth me? For they have not just increased, but they have the audacity to even say, There is no hope for me in God. That means I'm finished. But God, but David said, It's okay. They have spoken. It is my turn to activate and release my faith through my mouth. And he says, For thou, O Lord, art a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Give me some high energy. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Go ahead. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. We went through what? Fire. He didn't through. say we stayed in the fire and we stayed in the water. David said the other day, Yeah, go, I walk. Somebody say, keep walking, keep walking. Tell somebody, keep walking. Bishop, keep walking. Bishop, keep walking. Just keep walking. Yeah, go, I walk. Yeah, go, I walk. He said, I walk through what? I walk through the shadow of death. Not death, shadow. It looks like death, but it's a shadow. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's a shadow, it's not death. It will not kill you, it won't kill you. What you are going through will not kill you. Say, I hear you. It doesn't matter the sentence of death, you will survive. It doesn't matter what the enemy is saying. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Any now and then when you are afraid, 
Any now and then when the enemy projects things and mentally bombard you and is putting all kinds of pictures and objects in your mind concerning your husband, your wife, your children, your loved ones and things you love and care about and it's like the enemy tells you, you, this is going to happen to you, that is going to happen and he's hitting you with all those fiery darts, we call them fiery darts. Quench it with the shield of faith and this is the shield of faith. Isaiah 7:7, 7, 7, say with your mouth, because faith is released and activated with your mouth. Say with your mouth, Isaiah 7, 7. I hear what you are saying. I see the pictures and objects you are putting in my mind and in my head. I declare by the word of the Lord, it shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Hear me. Hear me. Jesus despised the shame. Are you hearing me? Sometimes the devil is going to tell you the whole world is the whole world has heard about you. Yeah. Most of the time when they say everybody knows about your problem, it's not true. And even if everybody knows, so what? Are you hearing me? So what? It is what it is. It's just a matter of time. When somebody said to me the other day, they said, they said, Papa. We hear that there's a lot of issues going on in action. And I said, somebody say, a lot of issues and mess. And I said, let me tell you something. In Noah's ark, do you know the kind of mess that was in Noah's ark? All kinds of animals and tools and things and everything was in Noah's ark. But it wasn't the mess that was in his ark. It was after everything, the ark landed on top of a mountain, not in a valley. So it is how this thing ends. Are you hearing me? And I said, at the end of it all, we will land on top, not under. Somebody say, on top, on top, on top. Are you hearing me? Listen. Let people say what they want to say. I always say, it's just a matter of time. You know, listen, the prophet said the other day, he said, my enemy, when I fall, rejoice not over me, for I will rise again. Somebody say, I'll bounce back, I'll bounce back. And then he said, when I sit in darkness, don't, don't rejoice, because the Lord shall be a light unto me. Then Psalm 27, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For when my enemies, even my foe, they come up to eat up my flesh, they stumble and they fall. Somebody give me a higher energy. Say yes. So, go back to 66. Go back to 66. We are not finished yet. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We uh -huh. went through fire and through water. Uh -huh. But you brought us out to a rich fulfillment. King Hear James, me. Let me your change. ending will be better and brought us to than your past. wealthy place. Your ladder, your ladder, your ladder will be better and greater than your path. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Hear me, don't think, don't think you have the upper hand. And let me speak <clears throat> to known and unknown adversaries. Let me speak in the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. To known and unknown enemies, that is a matter of time. It doesn't matter what you have spoken into the atmosphere, what you have programmed in the womb of time, what you have predicted, what you have imagined, what you have taught, what your demands and expectations may be, even the verdict you've passed concerning us and this out. It's just a matter of time. I declare by the word of the Lord, Isaiah 7, 7, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. 